guys, this is Jeff Sparks at Between Paint. In the second tutorial, I'm continuing the series about captivating design. Now, learning about captivating design, I think, is really a study about two simple themes. That which captivates the attention of a viewer, and second, that which loses the attention of a viewer. And so in the first video tutorial, I talked about visual eye movement, and that is certainly one of the ideas that helps captivate the viewer's attention and increases the amount of attention paid to your work. Today, though, we'll talk about one thing that can quickly cause a viewer to lose complete interest in your work and move on to the next painting. And that one thing we're going to talk about today is called perspective issues, perspective for painters. Now, I don't know about you, but this is what I think about when I hear the word perspective. Um, I think of math and uh, science and all of that sort of thing, and it is all of that. But my first reaction when I think of perspective and when I look at pictures like this, it's a sensation quite similar to going to the dentist, and that's not a lot of fun. In fact, when I was younger and I first had a time to learn about perspective, it was taught to me like math formulas and postulates in a geometry class, and that's about the picture of what I looked like when I was going through it then it would develop into something like this. So don't take me the wrong way. There are those elements to perspective that are mathematical and scientific, but for artists, it doesn't have to be painful. And because we are artists actively working on paintings right now, today, anything we can do to increase our accuracy in perspective can only help our visual work ahead of and apart from the vast majority of paintings that are out there right now. So in this tutorial, I'm going to approach perspective from the viewpoint of an artist, our viewpoint, um, not a math teacher or science teacher, but an artist. So it's a short study, but one that I think you're really going to find can boost your work. It certainly has helped uh, me boost mine. So let's get started. So when you think about perspective, the first amazingly difficult, obtuse, and anticoagulative principle I can think of about perspective is actually none of that stuff at all. It's very simple. Establish your horizon line. Now, when you're outdoors and you put up a canvas on your easel and you're painting a scene live, or when you're indoors and you're doing a still life or a figurative, or even if you have a piece of charcoal in your hands and you're at the life drawing class, you always establish your horizon line. Now, the horizon line is at one point I remember a difficult concept. I mean, it's simple. I mean, yeah, there's the horizon line, but what is it? And it's so very simple that sometimes we can think it's actually difficult. The horizon line is just your eyes. That's it. Um, if you look up or down, the horizon line moves with that. So imagine a perfectly straight laser beam shooting out of your eyes and what it hits at the very farthest end of the horizon, that's the horizon line. So if you are looking up to paint something, like you want to look at the top of a mountain, the horizon line will actually move down. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're looking straight ahead, you're it's like those lasers shooting out of your eyes. That's where the horizon line's at. If you are looking up to paint something, your horizon line moves down. And if you're looking down to paint something, such as a field of grass or a meadow of blue bonnets out in Texas, well, your horizon line will actually move up. And that's just the art behind it and the science, if you will. So let's review that real quick so we don't get lost in it. If you're looking up to paint, your horizon line moves down. If you're looking down to paint something on your paper or canvas, your horizon line moves up. You look up, it moves down. You look down, it moves up. Very simple. Now, you don't even have to have any kind of special measuring device to do this. You can usually wing it, uh, throw in a horizon line, and then paint. So, as artists, if we want the subject to be the sky or a mountain range, and to do that, we need to sort of look up into the scene, our horizon line will, in fact, be quite low on our canvas or paper. If you want to paint something, often like a still life or something uh, lower to the ground, your horizon line moves up. So it's really that simple. Um, now, there is a, a rule associated with this that I'll bring to your attention, and that becomes the second amazingly difficult, obtuse, and anticoagulative principle of perspective. Again, not too difficult at all. Keep your horizon line away from the center of your canvas or your paper. Well, that, you know, why? I mean, people will say, well, sure, you can put it there, but 
this is such a universally accepted principle that the only reason why you would put the horizon line in the center of your canvas is to simply prove to everyone that it can be done. Well, of course it can be done. It just hurts your painting when you do it. And if you're going to want a painting that captivates a, uh, a potential buyer or a client or a gallery owner or a judge in a juried show, putting your horizon line right dead center is amateurish. And unless you are so excellent at painting that you're the exception to that, which it, it can be done that way, then I would recommend keep your horizon line away from the center. And the reason for that is that it splits your canvas in two. Um, and that becomes a difficult thing when you're designing is when you have two paintings on the same canvas. And anything you can do to avoid that, you, you often do. And putting your horizon line dead center is one way to split your canvas and cause an umpteenth amount of difficulties you're going to need to overcome in a painting. So no horizon line at the center. Now, I'm looking at this painting. It's an uh, old masterwork. I believe it was around the early 18th century. And it's titled, as they often titled those paintings way back then, A Landscape at Evening with Travelers and Hunters Near Classical Ruins. Thank goodness for the Impressionists who took care of long titles to painting names. Uh, this is by Pierre Patel the Elder. And I bring this up because this is a great example of the horizon light. Now, the horizon line and basically perspective in general, uh, though it may not have been invented by Leonardo da Vinci, it has certainly been prevalent from that time forward. So as artists, even today, we cannot afford to miss knowing something about perspective. So even in 1709, I think this painting was painted, um, you're going to see that they were excellent at perspective. So look at this. And you ask yourself, well, where's the perspective line? Where are the horizon line so we can get all of our perspectives in from the classical ruins to the left? But, but don't be mistaken. You look at a painting like this, you can obviously see that there is a horizon line somewhere. It's invisible, of course. And perspective lines are shooting toward that horizon line, toward a vanishing point, uh, by looking at the ruins. But to your right and through the center of the painting, perspective is also taking place. And so that's what I wanted to point your attention to. Um, I went ahead and developed that. You can see where the horizon line for this painting is here based on how those angles, those lines coming from the classical ruins um, move back. So this person was very smart, Pierre Patel the Elder. He did not put his horizon line at the center. And the vanishing point, that one point perspective, if you will, it's what they call it, you know, it really establishes how tall everything is and how the whole picture flows. So if you look at that classical ruin to the left or the trees as they descend to the back, you can see him masterfully using uh, perspective to get this effect. Now, if he had uh, put it toward the center, that would have really changed everything. Look at how high up you would have had to start putting those perspective lines. And it would have almost a tunneling effect. And Unless that's the effect you want, that's certainly not what you want to do by putting the horizon line at center. But I also put a vertical center in to illustrate one sideline point, and that is when you're designing a composition, avoid also the center. So any major line in your painting, just avoid the center, even if those lines are visible or invisible. It helps make for a very strong painting if you do that. So right there, you now know enough to go do something a little different with your painting that will make it really start standing out and really draw the viewers in. So hey look, I don't have a tip jar. If you feel this video has been helpful, then feel free to grab the link to it and share it with other artists. Put it on your Facebook page or tweet the link. So that really helps me out and it helps me keep putting these forward. So until next time, this is Jeff Sparks at Between Paints.